Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're gonna talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We're gonna talk about Wizards of the Coast, and we're gonna talk about this mystery D&D &D summit. This sounds like major damage control being done that uh, Wizards is going to invite a bunch of influencers to some kind of a shindig, kind of like Disney does. Uh, and they basically buy off influencers. So there's been some backlash to this. Uh, a lot of people fighting each other on Twitter over this. Who is and who is not going to go? Of course, a lot of petty jealousy. I'm sure this happens all the time with other influencer circles like Disney. I know there was a lot of uh, jealousy amongst the people who were invited to Disney or Universal events and those who weren't. And uh, yeah, I, I totally believe this is about damage control. I think this is about uh, trying to win people back after the OGL 1.1 debacle. And this is all about getting people hyped up for uh, one D&D &D and the other shoe dropping. I think this is all about the other shoe dropping. They want the community to be prepped for when they uh, unveil their pay to play plans in my opinion, but we'll, we'll see what's being said. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, go out to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture news. Check out adventureengine.net. We're actually working on our own in-house game system. Uh, go sign up to get notified when we're ready to give more details about that. It's gonna be a while, just so you know, it is gonna be a while, but we are going to uh, actually produce our own in-house game system here at uh, Clownfish, and uh, we're pretty excited about it. It's gonna be something pretty different. Uh, not exactly one-to-one D&D, &D, but I think it'll be a good system for, uh, especially for beginning players and lapsed players. That's that's kind of the intention. Uh, so let's go back out to this. Uh, Wargamer.com, Wizards of the Coast invites influencers to Mystery D&D &D Summit. D&D publisher Wizards of the Coast has invited influencers in the Tabletop RPG space to the first Content Creator Summit for the Tabletop RPG. D&D publisher Wizards of the Coast has been inviting Tabletop RPG influencers to a new all-expenses-paid D&D Content Creator Summit. Oh boy, and social media has been abuzz with chat about who is and who is not going. Email invites have been sent out to numerous numerous D&D content creators this week about the event, which is going to be held at Wizards of the Coast office in Bellevue, Washington on April 3rd. The email sent to content creators has been widely shared, for instance, by YouTubers Bob the World Builder and Nerd Immersion. According to the invitation, the event will allow community figures to ask questions, give feedback, and connect with members of our studio and content teams. You know, they were doing damage control. They were sending... Um, Kyle Brink out, and it actually had the opposite effect. Uh, Kyle Brink stuck his foot in his mouth on multiple occasions on multiple uh, broadcasts, I think. And um, this is absolutely positively about damage control and controlling the fandom. In my personal opinion, this is a very, very much a play out of the Disney book. Attendees will get to chat to the creators of the tabletop role-playing game and also get to learn about the next D&D &D rules update. Yes, this is a promotion. And experience the D&D &D virtual tabletop. It's currently in the works, the official, the official virtual tabletop. The email states that influencers will have their travel, food, accommodation, and per diem costs covered, and there are no content requirements, with Wizards adding that it doesn't plan to take any footage or photographs of the event. Oh my God, I hope it's not DashCon or Fire Festival. I don't think it will be. However, the message also assures that nothing shared will be secret or under any kind of NDA, so obviously there's an expectation that creators will want to share the information presented to them with their fans. I have been to Disney events like this. It's, you know, they will wine you and dine you and you are allowed to say certain things. I mean, look, they tell you technically that you can say whatever you want to say, but after they just dropped a bunch of money to bring a bunch of influencers in, the whole purpose is to generate positive buzz. I can tell you if you do not give them positive buzz, you will not be invited back to the next event. It is an expectation that you will be playing on their team. And this is all about trying to mend fences with the community uh, to prep people for one D&D. &D. Because they're, look, they're, Wizards is screwing up left and right. I mean, it's no secret that everybody is calling them out. Uh, they've assured that their competition is selling more and more games, more games than they've ever sold, because people are jumping ship. A friend of mine, uh, I talked last week to him. He's been playing D&D &D his whole life, and he's, he's jumping ship the Pathfinder. 
over this crap. Anyway, um, D&D Twitter is consumed with talk about this content creator summit and what it means for wizards with many focusing on who was and who wasn't invited. Uh, for instance, creator D&D Shorts tweeted after his criticisms of wizard during the D&D, D&D OGL debacle, it's unlikely I'll ever be invited by the company, although he adds he's extremely happy wizards are reaching out to creators. They will never invite us. They don't have the balls to invite clownfish. Uh, I would go. I would go. I would go. But they don't have the balls for it. Some other commentators are weighing in on it. Gizmodo journalist Linda Kodega said on Twitter that the guest list shows wizards do not want real critique from people who aren't looking for their approval. Um, yeah. So that is true. And I believe, I believe she was the one that broke the OGL 1.1 uh, language, if I remember correctly. Yeah, she's a local killjoy. Now, this is what she said. Uh, I don't need D&D to make money, be successful, or do my job, which is precisely why I'm in a position as a journalist to critique, investigate, explore, and praise various parts of the TTRPG space. TTRPG influencers, however, have a more direct investment in keeping D&D happy. Um, this is the same with Disney influencers. It's the same with a lot of content creators, they get sponsorships or they get free stuff. I mean, if you're on salary at a company uh, and your job is to be objective, that's that's one thing. But uh, yeah, a lot of these big companies will absolutely try to buy you off. I mean, what are you going to do? The fact that WotC are almost exclusively catering to people who literally make money by being positive and aggressively extroverted and publicly excited by their products is a choice. They do not want real critique from people who aren't looking for their approval. Influencer hustle culture has created subsections of the entertainment industry that are causing large companies to divest from traditional outlets and invest in influencers because it is easy, because they can almost guarantee a win-positive reaction as pure corporate manipulation. She's not wrong. Um, I'm going to be honest, she is not wrong. I think there's a, an undercurrent from, from a lot of journalists, an undercurrent of salt, because advertising dollars are going to influencers. Um you know, they'll drop thousands of dollars to have a YouTuber give a shout out for a product. But, you know, they might have spent that on banner ads on a website, you know, five, six, ten years ago. And that's not the case now. Um, because, yeah, it is. I mean, how many people have we seen get uh, like when the new Shira came out, right? So when Netflix Shearer came out, they sent boxes out to people and everybody who got a box was super pumped for it and they could do a trailer reaction. We did a trailer reaction and just took little snippets of it. We got, we actually got uh, demonetized. We got a strike and they reversed it. But um, so obviously, you know, they're going to go for people that are friendly and they're not going to strike people that are friendly that are on their approved list. Disney does the same thing. This has been going on forever. Now you do have to disclaim if you're getting free stuff from these companies, right? I don't fault people for their aspirational labor, uh, WRT, the entertainment industry, but it is an incredible move for a company to ignore critics, contemporaries, and their future product designers in lieu of internet famous people. Uh, for whatever it's worth, I wouldn't have been able to accept the invite even if I had gotten it. I did not accept money from companies, and that includes food, lodging, or travel, and my colleagues. Uh, I and my colleagues have passed on opportunities because of this. That is actually a company policy for some outlets. Um, others, as long as they disclaim it, they will take perks, but it has to be disclaimed. And this is a whole nother issue with eth ethics and journalism and all that. But there are a lot of pop culture blogs. Uh, I'm convinced gaming sites. I'm convinced it's open secret that are on the take from companies like Disney and gaming studios and whatever. And, uh, you know, they will say nice things because they're incentivized to do so because they get invited to stuff. You know, look at what happened with Collider with Galaxy's Edge. You know, that was that was a mess. Um, so one last observation. D&D is the most popular tabletop RPG in the world. That brand recognition works for influencers, too. If you're an influencer who doesn't get the invite and can't deliver inside info to your following, you are losing out and D&D knows and can leverage that. That's true. So, again, this is a play right out of the Disney book. You find the positive brand friendly channels and influencers, the ones that are happy just to be there. And they're, they're totally cool being paid in cupcakes and you pump them up and you pump them up and you make them feel important. And they're going to go out there and they're going to do more positive PR than like an entire PR firm. 
is going to do because their audience is going to follow. And they're like, oh, my God, it's so great. So-and-so thinks this is the best, you know, version of D&D ever. And, you know, that's that's the logic. Now, you know, whether or not they're being honest, if they're really allowed to be – again, it's technically on paper. I think they're allowed to be honest. But, again, as someone who did this before, I can tell you you're not really allowed to be honest. You're not really allowed to be honest. It is an unspoken rule that if you want to continue to get inside access and free shit, you're going to have to play ball. This is why Pirates and Princesses, despite the fact that we get a pretty healthy amount of traffic uh, for a Disney website, Disney fan website, uh, we don't get invited to stuff because they know we're going to be honest. And actually, I'd rather us pay for out of pocket so we can be honest you know, and uh, anything like on Clownfish TV, we have people send us stuff to review. We make sure we disclaim it. Uh, and I'll be honest. I mean, we've gotten stuff before. I'm like, yeah, I can't. I can't give you a good review. This is crap. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> I've actually been in that position before. Um, but anyway, this is all coming on the heels of damage control. Uh, just today. It's so weird. I put out an article on clownfishtv.com yesterday talking about how weird Hasbro's gotten lately with a lot of their, uh, you know, initiatives, their uh, diversity and inclusion initiatives, their environmental initiatives, and how hypocritical a lot of them are. And I brought up D&D and Magic the Gathering, uh, along with Transformers. I'm a huge Transformers fan. And, um, you know, I said it was kind of hypocritical. And then all of a sudden, you know, here comes this this piece on Yahoo that they're named one of the most most ethical companies and that they have a high ESG score. So, I mean, this could all be related. I don't know. But I know that Hasbro is making some pretty questionable decisions lately. I, I think they're freaking out. I'm going to be completely honest. I think Hasbro is absolutely positively freaking the hell out because their golden goose at this point is Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast. They've been called out by Bank of America for overproducing cards. Uh, fans are angry. The OGL 1.1 thing was a massive disaster. And uh, now we're seeing that there's a bunch of Magic the Gathering being dumped in landfills and recycling centers. And it just feels like panic. And this feels like part of it. This feels like part of the uh, the panic is setting in because they're, they're realizing that like – because their stock is way down. Hasbro is way down. And – they just had to lay off 15% of their staff. Uh, they're cutting toy lines. They're cutting corners on their toy lines. It, it's starting to implode. They're looking to sell off their movie division. And the movie division is the one that's producing the D&D movie, which actually is getting pretty decent reviews uh, so far. Now, whether or not audiences are going to care, I have no idea. I really don't know. Um, I don't know. It looks kind of dopey to me, but it might, it might be good. It's, it's getting better scores than the original D&D movie. I think it had like a 10%. On Rotten Tomatoes, but um, you know they're they're betting heavy on this movie. They're betting heavy on one D and D, and they can't afford to lose any more D and D Magic or any Watsy product because that is what is keeping the company afloat at this point. And there was talk before they were going to sell off Watsy, and I'm I'm still not uh, convinced that they won't sell Watsy off at some point in time because it is worth a lot of money. It could be that. You know, a company like Tencent comes along and says, hey, we'll give you umpteen billions of dollars for D&D and Magic so we can make a bunch of shitty mobile games and that'll keep Hasbro afloat for years. Uh, you guys can just go back to making toys. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But if you go out to Twitter and you look for the Watsi Summit um, and we've got people fighting over this. Uh, once again, you want to hate on Watsi, be my guest, have a jolly hate parade. Sure. Stop attacking people invited to the summit. Or ground level employees. It's bullshit born of ignorance. You're not an iconoclast. You're just being an asshole. Grow the F up. Well, now that I've seen the discourse around the WotC Summit, some of y'all really, really need to evaluate why hating DD and WotC is your main personality trait. I hate everything, Trish. I hate everything. It's not just WotC. Uh, that's really all it is. Just say you're envious of the people. That's probably true. I, I think it's a, a mix of both. Uh, people want Watsi to engage with the community, so they hold a summit and invite individuals in the community who are well-respected, diverse, and known for speaking truths. And y'all acting like it's some kind of nefarious, evil plot. Y'all are running wild with your assumptions. No, this is this is marketing. This is marketing. I, and I'm sorry. As somebody who did this for Disney for years, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. 
Uh, running your mouth about the Watsi Creator Summit isn't going to stop Trump or DeSantis from taking... What? What the hell does that have to do with anything? Isn't going to stop Trump or DeSantis from taking power and ruining things for us all again. What? Throw your venom at something that matters. We're talking about a tabletop game. Yes, because because Trump or DeSantis being in office again or Trump again, which I, I personally don't think is going to happen. But DeSantis, let's say DeSantis wins, right? That That's not going to stop the game from being made. What the hell are you talking about? Here's Linda again. This is not about the literal location of the Influencer Summit. It's a rhetorical question regarding equitable support and championing of the creators who literally make products for WOTC, freelance and full-time artist writers, etc. cetera. Um, oh my God, are we still talking about the summit? How about we focus on how WOTC tried to destroy a whole section of the TTRPG hobby and probably only stopped because it was going to destroy their IP. That's what this is about. Uh, Kimmy on Spoutable and Dice.Camp. Uh, that, that, that's what this is about. This is damage control. And this isn't me being cynical. This isn't me. I am telling you, as someone who has literally done this before with other companies, this is damage control. They know they're fucked. Wizards knows they're in a really bad place right now. And what they're going to do is they're going to throw all kinds of money at influencers to try to save face. That's what this is all about. But uh, again, when you've got communities like this and people are trained, lied to, to believe that they're part of a community, that the corporation views them as a community when you're actually a commodity, which they have proven time and time again. When you are led to believe that you're part of a community, there's going to be a lot of jealousy when your siblings, you know, get to go to summer camp and you don't. And that's basically what's going on here. Uh, this person says, can't trust any influencer who accepts it. Um, didn't get invited to the Watsi Summit because they're afraid to answer the hard hitting questions. Well, yeah, if you're going hard in the paint against them, they're not going to pay out. The TTRPG community. Has a meltdown over whether or not influencers accepting a paid trip to the Watsi Summit compromises their integrity. Video game writers. There it is, guys. Um, here, this person must have been invited. If y'all think I'm going to this Watsi Creator Summit to sugarcoat and be all ooh-woo, d d forever, oh my god. What the hell? You're sorely mistaken. Rivals is now an indie show winding down. Okay, so she's with Rivals. Um, winding down our 15th season. Black Dice is done. I've also been blunt with them even when consulting. So whatever, whatever guys. Um, oh, here we go. Linda Codega again. Uh, lastly, the fact that Watsi is going to spend six to seven figures on this influencer glamping trip and not invest in publicly supporting known established and working TT RPG writers, designers, et cetera, is a disgrace. Uh, where is the creator summit? Uh, it's at their HQ, I guess. Yeah. Um, Will Phillips says, take every opportunity offered you good on you. Go for it. Doing so is colluding with Hasbro's PR effort to calm the waters. But yes, for they inevitably try to screw the TTRPG community again in the future. They're going to, they're going to drop the other shoe with one D and D. I can almost guarantee it. Three, no one to sell out. Actually, it might be a good time to cash in your chips. If you're a D and D content creator, or uh, influencer because I think things are going to get really ugly when they drop one D and I just I have a feeling I think I think the OGL 1.1 thing was a taste of things to come because Hasbro is even more desperate now than they were a couple of months ago. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I don't know, guys. I just think it's really funny that everybody's shocked by this when other companies have been doing it forever, forever. So I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, and we'll talk later.